One of the best ways or the simplest ways to hear from God is through sleep. Sleep is a gift that God has given us, yet we do not use it effectively. Remember the Bible says that there is no sleep for the wicked. Why? Because God gives sleep to those that he loves. Are you a beloved of God? Then God gives you sleep for a purpose. Because when you sleep, your, sub, uh, your conscious mind is not awake. And the conscious mind is the side of man, the, the carnal man okay this is this is when man is able to see things in the in the in the in the in the five senses and uh, the five senses they are asleep you're hearing you're seeing you're testing you're feeling all that is like is asleep but then now something else wakes up which is the subconscious mind and when the subconscious mind has woken up my friends the subconscious mind is where god lives remember the bible says in luke 17 verse 21 that the kingdom of god is within you and god lives in the minds of men and the hearts of men that's where he lives remember god is spirit and he wants to commune with these people so the moment you're asleep and the subconscious mind is fully awake and the or the subconscious mind is now fully active that is the moment that god can is able to deliver messages to you and the sleep is one of the best ways that you can be able to commune to God. So today I'm going to show you different ways that God spoke to his people during sleep and how you can be able to use the same thing and how you can position yourself to receive the actual and accurate messages from God while you're asleep. Now, let me put some base by giving you uh, the story from the book of Job. Uh, we understand in the book of Job, chapter 33, verse 14 to 16, the Bible says, For God speaks once, yet twice, yet man perceives it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. So this verse definitely shows that God communicates with man through dreams, during deep sleep, often to reveal truth that might not be perceived during waking moments. And the subconscious becomes an avenue for divine messages. So do you usually take some time and go and sleep so that you can be able to have instructions sealed into your ears? Or do you work 24 hours and you run over and over? Actually, the Bible says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. What is the Bible trying to tell you? Relax. Be easy. Keep quiet sometimes. Be still and know that I am God. Psalms 46 verse 10. Sometimes we run too much and we don't relax. And God wants us to relax. He has given us all things. When you're rushing after one thing after another and you're not stopping, you're not giving God time to be able to show his might. We run so much. We are afraid so much. My friends, the Bible says worrying cannot add even one inch to your life. Cannot even one add one second to your life. So why should you worry so much? God provides to those that he loves even when they are asleep. That is a moment that he gives them uh, instructions and he tells them what to do. But then you need to align yourself. Remember, the dream of Jacob in the book of Genesis 28 verse 10 to 12, the Bible says, And Jacob went out from Bathsheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, do you see again? He dreamed and behold, a ladder set up uh, on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it. What does this mean? We see in Jacob's dream, the ladder connecting heaven and earth symbolizes divine access. It was in his sleep that Jacob received profound revelation of God's presence and promises, which might not have been perceived consciously. There's also another guy. There's also another guy. Um, do you remember... <laughs> Do you remember this guy called Joseph? Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus. What happens in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 50, uh, 20? It says, but while he thought on these things, while Joseph was thinking about, hmm, Mary's pregnant, 
What's going to happen? Should I leave her? While he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Meaning, he thought, he thought, he thought until he fell asleep. And at the moment of sleeping, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you are the son of David. Fear not to take you, Mary. Uh, uh, fear not to take unto thee, Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. You see, through a dream, God communicated to Joseph, reassuring him to take Mary as his wife and revealing the divine nature of Jesus' conception. And Joseph's dream allowed him to act in alignment with God's plan. So there is so much that you can get from sleeping. And why don't we relax sometimes? It is because we are running after things and uh, we are forgetting that God speaks in the subconscious. God is spirit and you have to get into the subconscious. You have to get into the spiritual to be able to commune with God. People think that by shouting so loudly, Oh God, hear me. No, prayer is not verbal. Prayer is mental. And when you get inside yourself, and you close your door. What did Matthew 6, 6 say? When you pray, get into your room and close your door and speak to your father who is in the secret place and your father who is in the secret place shall answer you in the open. What does this mean? When you want to pray, get into your room. Where do you stay? You stay in this body. Remember, you're a spirit with a body. So your dwelling place is in the body. So get into your room, get inside yourself and close your door. What, are the, what is the door of this room, of this body? It is the five senses, the eyes, the ears, the sensing, the smelling, the, everything that you can be able to perceive from the outside. That is your door. Close them. Stop focusing on the outside and get inside and speak to your father who is in the secret place what is the secret place where god lives is in the mind and the hearts of men speak to him inside and my friend when you speak to god from the inside he will answer you in the open in the third dimension people are going to be looking and saying hmm, how does this person do his things how how, how is he changing the world how He's been speaking to the Father in the secret place. But people who yap a lot, yap a lot, make a lot of noise, they hardly get to hear from God. Prayer is not making noise or saying long things. It is basically communing with God from the inside. And my friend, one of the easiest ways to commune with God is just sit down, get to a place where you're silent. And just like Joseph, while you're thinking on these things, then you're going to fall asleep and God is going to speak to you in a dream and in a vision. He's going to explain to you and he's going to seal his instructions in you. My friend, sleeping is very important. So take time, take a nap once in a while, you know. Even uh, when you're tired during the day, take 15 minutes and just commune with God. Just sit down in a place where you can resonate and be taken in sleep. And my friend, God is going to seal instructions in you. He's going to tell you things that you've never imagined. But when you're running and running and running, remember, there's no rest for the wicked. And if you're a person of God, he, he needs you to rest. He says, come all of you who are heavy laden and I shall give you rest. And part of that rest is sleep. And when you sleep, I'm going to seal instructions into your ears. You're going to hear, you're going to see visions, you're going to see dreams, and I'm going to show you the plans that I have for you.